Hi, and welcome to Tea Tuesday. Well, this is take two. I don't know what happened to the first one I did. Um, so I went to upload it and I'm like, it's gone. I probably deleted it yesterday when I had a bunch of stuff on my camera. So we're going to redo Tea Tuesday. If you'd like to join in, just put hashtag Tea Tuesday. And there's a bunch of ladies and gents that are in the group. Um, they do crafts, they talk, they color. You can do whatever you want. You can, it's an open collaboration. So you come and go as you choose. So today, and you drink a beverage of your choice. It started out with tea and then it kind of went on to all sorts of things. Um, but you can drink a beverage of your choice. Um, that's what people are doing now. I am drinking sweet tea and I'm almost out of it. And I just wanted to show you this. I got this at Dollar General last year. It keeps my drink nice and cold. I paid, it was regular eight. I got it from Markdown for four. But you can see it's peeling all up. It's showing its age. But the inside, the inside is fine. Um, outside doesn't look too pretty. So this is a retake. I'm sorry I have to do this again. But let's get started. And um, everything will be in the description box down below if you'd like to join in on the collaboration. And here is Don't Be Silly, Mr. Twiddle. So I gotta move this, it's glaring. There. And we're gonna read today. Get a drink before I start. Mm. Here we go. I had to remember where I started. I remembered it was started with the chapter, so I was lucky there. Here we go. Mr. Twiddle lets the cat in. Twiddle, dear, let the cat out, will you? Said Mrs. Twiddle, busily, 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 ugh, can't talk this morning, knitting in her chair by the fire. I don't know why you can't teach that cat to open the doors, grumbled Mr. Twiddle, getting up. You always say she's very, very clever. And yet, she has never learned a simple thing like that. Well, she's very sharp the way she goes and sits by the door whenever she wants to come in or out, said Mrs. Twiddle. Do hurry, Twiddle. I shall keep the cat waiting if I like, said Mr. Twiddle, who had been able to like his wife cat. He can't stop to take something out of a drawer. The cat meowed. Don't call me names, said Twiddle. You're almost as, uh, you're a most annoying creature. When you're out, you want to come in. And when you're in, you want to go out. I know you. You just want to go have a chat with the cat next door so you can make me get up, let you out, and then, when you find the cat next door isn't there, you'll want me to let you in. You're a nuisance. Meow, said the cat and began to wash herself. Mr. Twiddle opened the door, but the cat went on washing herself. Look at that now, said Twiddle, asking to go out. And she doesn't want to after all. All right, I'll shut the door. Plus, the next time you want to go out, you can wait. He shut the door, but before it was quite closed, the cat slipped out into a shadow and the tip of her tail was caught in the door. Mr. Twiddle. She gave such an howl that Mrs. Twiddle leaped out of her chair. Twiddle, how cruel are you? You shut the cat in the door. I did not, said Twiddle, 
a little scared himself by the cat's dreadful howl. She slid out as I was shutting the door, and the tip of her tail got pinched. That's all. Serves her right. I shall not have you talk like that, said Mrs. Twiddle, getting all upset and dropping a stitch in her knitting. Well, well, not talk any more about this, said Twiddle, sitting down with his newspaper again. There's no more to be said, but there was because Mrs. Twiddle had a great deal to say. By the time she had finished, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Twiddle was certain that he was the cruelest man in the world and that he had upset his wife enough to make her feel quite ill and had half killed her poor cat. And now I suppose you won't let her in tonight, said Mrs. Twiddle, a tear dropping on her knitting. You'll make her stay out in the cold. I will get her in, said kind-hearted Mr. Twiddle, who really couldn't bear to see his wife upset. I'm sorry, I pinched her tail. I promise you, I'll get her in tonight. Thank you, Twiddle, said Mrs. Twiddle in a small voice and smiled at him. After that, he read the newspaper in peace and forgot all about the cat till Mrs. Twiddle said it was really time for bed. She put away her knitting and got up. You'll get the cat in, dear, won't you? She said, oh dear, the cat, yes. I'll let her in, said Twiddle. You go on up. Open the door, dear, and she'll come in there and go straight to a basket by the copper, said Mrs. Twiddle. There are mice there, and I like her to sleep there. I'm scared to death of mice. Always have been all my life. Now, instead of here in the kitchen, right, said Twiddle, he opened the door for Mrs. Twiddle to go upstairs. Then he yawned made up the fire to keep for the night, and wound up the clock. How many of you all had a wind-up clock? I did. I think we still have one. Then he went out to the kitchen, and he opened the door. No cat came sliding in by his leg. He called loudly, Puss! 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 Come along, Puss Puss. Now Puss came. Mrs. Twiddle waited for about three minutes till he felt rather cold. Then he called again rather impatiently. Puss, puss, don't you hear me? Come along in at once. No cat appeared. Mr. Twiddle began to wish he hadn't promised to let her in that night. Suppose the cat kept him standing there for an hour. It would be just like her. She was probably hiding in a bush just outside, laughing to herself to see him standing there waiting. Twiddle felt angry. Then an idea came to him. He would tempt the cat in. He went to the larder and found the fish for breakfast. Three nice herring. He took one, wrapped it up in newspaper, laid it on the mat just inside the door. Then he went back to the warm kitchen, sat down with his paper again. To wait for the cat to come in, he was sure he would hear the rustling of a paper, and the cat tried to get in at the heron. Then he went to hop up, shut the door. All, oh, whoops, got two pages here and put the fish back into the larder. Much a nice, simple plan, thought Mr. Twiddle. Yes, indeed it was. Unfortunately, Mr. Twiddle fell asleep as soon as he got back into his chair. I can see trouble. He didn't hear the cat come in and fiddle at the paper around the fish. He didn't hear the next door cat come in too and get excited about the herring. He didn't hear the ginger cat across the road walk in or the big tabby from the bottom of the garden. Mrs. Twiddle Cat was angry to think she have to share the heron with others. She spat and hissed at them. Then in walked 
Black Tom, the biggest cat in town, and all the other cats made way for him. Black Tom began to tear at the paper. The other cats came closer. He hit out at them. The tabby hit back, spitting and snarling. Then quite suddenly, all the cats exploded together in one big hiss of anger. The noise awoke Mr. Twiddle. He sat up, remembered his plan of getting the cats indoors. She's there now, he thought to himself. How clever am I? I'll just pop the fish back into the larder and shut the door. Hi, puss, is that you? All five, cur all five cats heard his voice and became quiet. They hid in different places as he came out to the in the dark. He groped about the fish and found it on the floor, its paper almost off. He popped it into the larder, spoke to the cat. Now you settle down and go to sleep, puss. No more getting in and out tonight. He went back to the kitchen. Unfortunately, he had left the larder door open and the cat soon found this out. Oh, Mr. Twiddle. As soon as Twiddle was safely upstairs, Black Tom led the way to the fish smell in the larder. The parcel of herring was dragged down with a thud. A small dish came down and broke on the floor. The cats spat at one another. Mrs. Twiddle awoke with a jump. When the dish broke, she sat up in bed and listened. She couldn't make out what the noise downstairs was at all. She clutched poor Twiddle and woke him up with a start. Twiddle, it's a burglar. They're downstairs. Twiddle had often been awakened by Mrs. Twiddle and told, and told they were burglars, but there never had been, and he was getting tired of going downstairs for nothing. He turned over and settled himself comfortably again. Rubbish, he said sleepily. You're imagining things as usual. Psst, went the cats, and one of them gave a frightful howl. Mr. Twiddle sat up with a jump. Mrs. Twiddle groaned in fright. Twiddle, you simply must go down and see what it is, whispered Mrs. Twiddle. Twiddle didn't want to get, didn't want to in the least, but he had to pretend to be brave, even if he didn't feel it. So down he went with a poker in one hand and a hammer in the other. The noise came from from the larder. Mr. Twiddle twitched the light on suddenly and then stood in horror at the scene. The place was full of cats. They chewed, they hissed, they snarled, they spat. Mr. Twiddle went suddenly mad in rage. He leaped at them, dealing out slaps and blows with his bare hands, for even in his rage, he felt he couldn't use the poker or the hammer. The cats began to howl and snow, almost falling over one another, trying to get away from the angry man. Burr, that's for you. Grrr, take that. How dare you come into my house? Out of my way, out of my way. I'll teach you to come here in the middle of the night. Mrs. Twiddle, trembling upstairs, felt certain that Mr. Twiddle must be dealing with at least five dangerous burglars. How brave of him. How marvelous he was. Then she heard the door open and shut again with a bang. After that, Mr. Twiddle came upstairs, panting and angry. Mrs. Twiddle greeted him with open arms. Twiddle, dear, how brave you are. Are you hurt? How many were there? Five at least. Anyways, I've dealt with them and sent them all flying. I think you're marvelous, said Mrs. Twiddle, still thinking that Twiddle had fought burglars. Mr. Twiddle was pleased and surprised at his wife's admiration. 
I went for them like anything, he said. You should have seen them rush out of the door. Tails out behind them. Mrs. Twiddle felt astonished. Tails, she said. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Did you say? How could they have tails? Well, don't cats generally have tails? Said Mr. Twiddle. Excuse me, gotta have a drink. Ah, good sweet tea. Cats, were they? Cats, I thought they were burglars, cried Mrs. Twiddle. Of course they were cats, said Mr. Twiddle crossly. I suppose that stupid animal of yours brought them all in. They have eaten practically everything in the larder. Oh, how wicked, how dreadful, cried Mrs. Twiddle. Old oh, Twiddle, I hope you have your puss a smack in two and sent her out. I hope you didn't let her in again. I did not, said Mr. Twiddle. I had great pleasure in smacking her. Now perhaps you won't wake me. Keep getting up to go and let her in and out. I certainly won't, said Mrs. Twiddle. Very angry indeed to think that her petted spoiled cat should actually have dared to fill the scullery with her friends and raid the larder. Well, well, Puss would certainly stay out all night. Twiddle fell asleep and snored a little. Mrs. Twiddle laid there and thought about the cats. Then she finally and suddenly sat up, poked Twiddle hard. Twiddle, there's something I want to know. Who left the larder door open so the cats got in? Mr. Twiddle was not answering to her questions like that. Not he. He snored a little louder and made no movement at all. Leave that till morning. Perhaps Mrs. Twiddle would forget about it by then. But she won't. It's quite certain she'll remember to ask Twiddle that question and a lot more besides. Poor Twiddle. He does get forgetful and gets himself in trouble, doesn't he? Great stopping point. I read a little longer than I usually do. I want to say thank you for coming to Tea Tuesday and listening to this wonderful story, Don't Be Silly, Mr. Twiddle. We're getting there. Um, like I said, this is an open collaboration. You can have hot tea, cold tea, formal or informal tea. Have a great day. God bless. Stay safe. You never know what's on my videos. We'll see you tomorrow for Grammy's DT Meals and Snacks. Come on over. It's an open collaboration. You'll love it. Bye now.